I need to do is I need to thank you first of all for being on the show last time it had an impact for uh, a number of people uh, because they were able to have a discussion on trauma and you laid out some really good tips that they were able to utilize uh, so anytime my guest does that that makes me do what I'm doing right now which is smile uh, I love the fact that uh, when my guests come on uh, they're able to help one person at a time without them even knowing that they're doing that. So uh, I want you to know I truly appreciate that. Uh, individuals are able to come here, keep their uh, their privacy, and be a part of the show, uh, but they openly tell me uh, privately uh, what they like about the guests when they come on. And uh, they truly appreciated what you did last time. We talked about trauma is what we did last time. We did, yeah. Thank you. And I and I so appreciate the the time to share what I've learned personally and professionally and, um, you know, giving practical day to day tips is really important, but then also understanding the source of where this is coming from and the long journey of healing. That's kind of both sides that we have to tackle. Because essentially, um, whatever, whatever we're facing, um, we can begin to navigate and find some breathing room. But a lot of times it's kind of hard to do that if we don't know which way to point east, west, north, south, it's good to have someone give us a sense of direction so that uh, we can get our emotional compass in line and know which way we need to go. Um, it can be hard to just sit and wait. Well, you probably know that. you got to sit and wait for me. Don't you be trying to sneak back there, dude. Don't even me. I see you, Beard. He's getting Don't ready. Even... He needs a little coffee okay, first. Right. <laughs> okay, all right. But what I was going to say is we are able through the discussion we had last time and what we're hoping to do today and then again on the 20th uh when we get together again this month is to lay out some suggestions and self-care tips and ideas uh, that some some can implement may work for some and not for others we're really concerned about the ones that can implement them so anxiety that's what we're going to talk about right now anxiety comes in two faces as it were it can be a liability or an asset there are times uh, a measured amount of anxiety can keep us on our toes if we need to lock the front door or other things that we need to do, uh, make sure the stove is turned off. There's some things that we may need a measure of anxiety. But a lot of times people find it very hard to sometimes get out of bed, let alone go to bed at night because of anxiety. Feel yes. free to take the lead in that. So you're right, stress in small bursts is very beneficial. It's shown to have motivation. It lets you know if there's a real danger. What we're seeing is constant hypervigilance, constant awareness, which is anxiety. And then you're right, when, when that constant exhaustion of, of an anxious brain and body um, stays with you, it can lead to depression, right? So they're very closely linked. Um, this pandemic we've seen 300% of a rise in anxiety. And that's hard. That's a hard number to listen to. What we're also seeing is a huge boost in people asking for support. So that's the good part is people are recognizing it. They're jumping on Zoom. They're getting the help that they need and they're managing. They're managing it. So for me, it's knowing and adjusting. It's simple shifts to the right and to the left. Mm -hmm. Knowing, being connected to your thoughts and how your body's reacting to those thoughts, and then little changes, little shifts, adjustments to get you through your day better. It's amazing. We can, uh, we can have a friend and, and uh, we go over to their house and they make this really great chocolate cake and, and we may have made a chocolate cake or you know we've eaten them before and we want that recipe. And then if the friend just says, oh, no, it's just chocolate cake. You go like, no, but this one is different. What, how do you make this chocolate cake? And they go like, no, it's just chocolate cake. It, you know, it's easy to label something or get caught up in labels. 
oh, of, of identifying something. But what you did last time we were together and what you're doing right now is you're talking about looking at how we can take care of ourselves. You're getting into the recipe and the ingredients of how we actually can make a peaceful life. That's what I like about you. Because what you just mentioned right now is very important. For example, a lot of people talk about anxiety and trauma. I know. I look for people to be on the show. <laughs> so Everybody does it. And after a while, because I'm looking, I hear the same message. So someone will say, well, what is Amy talking about that's any different? Um, Amy gets into, as there are others like yourself, the actual recipe of what to do instead of just throwing out labels of what to do. Yeah. And it's easy to point at anxiety or point at a problem. There's a lot of talk shows that do that. But you're very solution-based, which is why I like you and what you do. For example, everybody hold on for a second. I'm going to turn this way. I see, keep, keep writing in. I see Fadwa here, uh, Brahms here, uh, CCS uh, Mantra and others. Uh, this discussion we're having today is with Amy. The book goddess and others are here. Let me move this around here. I'm going to read something to everyone. Just uh, hold on here. i got to pull it up on the screen here. Um, this is a posting that you have, Amy. It says, uh, when my son was born, the only coping skills I had were alcohol and crying to my friends. Do you remember that posting? That was uh, yes. August 31st. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you had this posting. Yeah. Um, it says, I didn't know I had anxiety. I, I didn't know I had anxiety. So if anxiety, let's just take, take the word anxiety out. Let's stick chocolate cake in there. So you didn't know you had chocolate cake. Now everybody thinks of chocolate cake. They think of it as good. Uh, we're not saying anxiety per se. Overwhelming anxiety is good. But I'm just sticking a different word, a couple of words in there. So you had chocolate cake. It says, I honestly thought everyone's brain worried every second of the day. The last few years, I have been... I have made huge shifts in my mental, physical, and spiritual health. That's what you went through. Yeah. You 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 had chocolate cake and you decided. <laughs> no, I, I got to stop saying that. You had you had anxiety. And in I just the thought I was a perfectionist. <laughs> that, you thought you were like normal. Everybody else is I like was me. Just you know a control freak, and I thought <laughs> wow. I you know just like to manage it all. I didn't understand the constant pressure and negative thoughts that went along with trying to manage and control it all. We can be very efficient people. We can be high achievers, but is there joy behind it? Does it feel purposeful yes. as opposed yes. to constantly thinking, yes. how can I manage yes. it, right? And, it, and what's interesting, I, I got to step in here just for a second and say this. As soon as you started to say that after I, I read that, you started to automatically throw out labels that maybe you were holding on to before. I'm not turning this into an open session of diagnosing you, but I'm just saying as a positive conversation, I find this quite fascinating that we're talking about this. And when I read that and I've talked to you, we did a show prep and I'm looking at it and I'm going like, there are other people beside Amy on this planet that go through this. Those labels of perfectionism and I was just being an overachiever, all these other things, people throw all those labels not necessarily at other people when it comes to stuff like anxiety, they dump them on themselves to create even more overwhelming, anxious anxiety. Oh, for sure. And, and what we do see is one of the most common traits for those of us with anxiety is the self-esteem, is the insecurities. We might show up as these, you know, go, go, go achievers, but inside yeah. there's so much doubt and fear and insecurity yeah. that we're trying to compensate for. And that is a part of the pressure, right? That we're putting on ourselves. Yeah. And then my, obviously those that we love. Yeah. Yeah. I was, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> and then it, then it has a ripple effect on our children, yeah. especially if they're, they're still in their develop, developmental years. They start to pick up on that same thing, thinking that, well, this is the way I'm supposed to live. Under this constant, I'm almost on the edge of the cliff. I hate to go to the mailbox and see the next piece of mail that comes in life. Yeah. Uh, matter Your words, you continue, and I'll just read the rest of it as we go on in this, uh, this uh, positive conversation. Uh, I want to, you, you mentioned this. I want to share them, that is, the shifts that you made. I want to share them with you so that you may understand 
that you are not alone. Why did you feel a need to share that statement with all of social media that you wanted to share what you went through so they don't feel, we don't feel that we are alone? Right. And, and that's kind of the balance that I have as a, as a psychotherapist. I strictly work with trauma and EMDR work. And I don't share too much of my personal journey as a, as a psychotherapist. You know, you keep that line of professionalism. With the k and coaching, I get to give real life examples of the changes and the shifts that I needed to make so that I can have some joy and ease in my life. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know I deserved it. I didn't know it was possible. I didn't know how hard I was holding on to things so tightly, trying to control and manage things out of fear, right? Yeah. So especially with moms, moms have PTSD right from the get-go. The repeated mm -hmm. trauma of, is my baby safe? Is my baby yeah. eating? Is my baby breathing? Yeah. You're in this vigilant state, really the first two, three years of their life. How do we take a breath after that? How do we come out and start to say, okay, now I got to refuel myself a little bit. If my son sees me exhausted and resentful and anxious, he's going to think he's a burden. What does that say to our children? If they look at us and we are completely drained, they think they're a burden. They think yeah. they're too much for us. Mm -hmm. So for us to be able as mothers to carve out little moments of care, mm -hmm. I don't have an hour to go sit and meditate. Little moments. I'm talking three minutes here and there to refuel, yeah. right, right. to lower the busy mind. Then mm -hmm. your children look at you and see that you have genuine joy. We can fake it. My son will see me in the kitchen dancing with him, but he knows if I'm doing it just to kind of appease him. Yeah, yeah. Or if I'm really present in the moment, enjoying yeah. it with him. And I never had that before. It was all, what should I do? What could I do better? The shoulda, coulda, wouldas. Yeah. That's, when it that's not a when, life. When it comes to looking at life, we have to find out, are we just going through the motions based upon what you're saying then? Yeah. Coulda, shoulda, wouldas. As opposed to, what do I have right in front of me right here, right now? So that's the biggest thing for anxiety is the anxious brain wants all the what ifs to be answered, right? So anxiety is not knowing a future outcome, mostly, mm -hmm. right? We might have some worry about the past, what we could have done better, but a lot of future what if. Every time you think or say what if, you're actually firing up this part of your brain, the amygdala, which is fight or flight. All this part of your brain asks, is mm. am I safe, am I safe? So all this future tripping, right? What mm -hmm. if, what if, keeps you in this fight or flight. So when we say mindfulness, to me, that means, can I stay right here, right now, and just look at what is in front of me here? What support systems do I have? What difficulties do I have? How do I get through this moment, and how do I actually maybe enjoy <laughs> this moment? Yes, right, right, which is... Which is, it's actually the path that you, with the style of, of coaching that you do, you allow people to, to make progress. Or in other words, as you put in your own words, describing your own life, to make a shift. Yeah. It, it's easy, again, I repeat this, and I'll probably repeat it a number of times more. Uh, I said it a number of times on this platform, uh, Narc Abuse TV Network. It's one thing to point out a problem and throw labels at a situation or people. It's another thing to come up with tips, strategies, tricks, skills to navigate and maneuver for a better life, for a happy conclusion or solution, for a happy result. And that's, again, I repeat, why I like your style. You want to offer to individuals more than just picking up a medical or clinical definition of something and point at it you're saying let's go beyond that and that's what this platform stands for it's easy to just have a negative discussion about narcissism or anything else but can a person get to a point of recovery measured controlled recovery bite-sized steps as it were uh, so i'm going to do this now that i've said all of that so everybody understands why i really like amy and why i wanted her on
<laughs> it's not about being perfect. And uh, we, we will all have anxious moments. But it's about recognizing that we don't have to label ourselves or put ourselves down. We can have steps that we can make so that we can adjust our life to measure down, put in its place the anxiety that we're feeling or the what ifs, the woulda, coulda, shouldas, and understand what's behind those. Having the time to really dance with our children, to, to really mean the hug that we're giving to our mates or, or our friends. Uh, and the only way we can do that is putting anxiety in its place uh, whether it is a liability or an asset. Um, that was my uh, I'm a dad, get on my soapbox moment. Okay, <laughs> I just had to get all that out. I, I got to turn a few things here before I get to something else uh, that's related to you, and that's uh, everyone that's been talking so far here in the chat. Um, of course, I'm here in California. It's uh, morning here, moving into afternoon. You are... Two hours, three hours ahead of me? I forgot where you are now. No, I'm L.A. I'm here. I'm with you. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Duh. Okay, so it's morning here for both of us. Uh, we are both um, hid in bunkers in some part of California. You can never find us because uh, – I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. Uh, CCS Mantra says, know your triggers and knowing how to effectively communicate a response that can help you and others. You want to run with that one? Yes, yes, there's something called hysterical equals historical. Okay. Hysterical equals historical, which means if I'm having a really large reaction to something right now, what is the trigger? What is it reminding me of that I haven't healed or taken care of in the past? And so that overreaction or that very strong agitation, physical reaction or verbal uh, response that <laughs> maybe yeah. is met with even more aggression, right? Mm -hmm. It's because something in the past hasn't been resolved, right? And so it's just sitting here waiting. And then anything that reminds you of that just piles right up to here. And then, and then it comes out as a reaction as opposed to pause, reflection, and a calm, assertive response, right? So yes, knowing your triggers. And I always say, Knowing your triggers is, how is my body reacting to what this person's saying first? I, the thoughts might be very busy. Yeah. I'm going to pause and say, oof, my stomach just completely dropped when they just mentioned that work assignment. Mm -hmm. So with anxiety, I think it's really important to look at the thoughts, the feelings, and the behaviors, Right. And I'll share a workbook with you that would be great for you to go through with your therapist um, or just for you to have more knowledge with it. It's the dialectical. Well, I'll just show it now. Dialectical uh, right. Hold it right. Th hold it right there where you are there. there. Everybody, everybody feel free to take a screenshot of that uh, while uh, Amy is holding it up. Go ahead. You were going to say, Amy. So this workbook, you know, you don't want to just go through it yourself. <laughs> Maybe find a support group um, or a therapist that will walk you through this. But this workbook, Thoughts, Feelings, and Behaviors, right? It mm -hmm. incorporates mindfulness. It actually incorporates some Buddhism, which, you know, my partner's going to talk a little bit about how that helps my anxiety. But making the link between, let me pause. How did this moment just impact my body? Okay, my stomach just dropped and my shoulders just tightened. Okay, whew, what are my thoughts? How dare they tell me? that I have to do that, that's not my job, right? And then the pause will actually help you with your behavior. Maybe you can respond differently, maybe you can respond an hour from now, maybe you can ask for some support from someone else. So breaking that kind of negative pattern of this, I feel anxious, oh, I'm not even acknowledging it, I'm just reacting. Mm, right. We wanna break that pattern. That's, that's how you make significant life changes, I have found. When it comes to life before you were where you are right now, before the shift, <laughs> you, you need to, you need, you need to have, you need to hashtag that and make some t-shirts called the shift. Uh, that should be a title of a book. Yeah, um, it wasn't uh, pretty. It was a lot of, a lot of throwing phones and keying cars and, you know, <laughs> but when, what, 
when it comes to what was sitting right there for you, you know, you now, uh, safe to say, correct me if I'm wrong, you have a pretty good idea of what was sitting right here that kept being poked at and you kept reacting to an underlying underneath current and issue that uh, that was there. That didn't mean that you as a human being didn't have value. It's just that there was there was some <laughs> some unresolved aspects that needed to be unearthed yeah. emotionally uh, because, well, your reactions were happening because what? I mean, you're the professional. I'm just a guy with a show. But your reactions were based upon the fact that it needed to be attended to. Yeah, and I, and I think I learn a lot from kids, too, because when, when their behavior looks like defiance, right, when mm -hmm. we have a really bad aggressive reaction, I think the same need is there. They need to be seen and heard. So for me, if someone, you know, sends me a text message that I don't like and I have to be seen and heard, you have to understand me. You have to understand my point of view immediately. I immediately need to be seen and heard, right? Mm -hmm. That's the same thing as a child being defiant. They, they're yelling, see me, hear me. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times with kids, their anxiety is going to show up as defiance. I don't want to go to the store. Maybe mm -hmm. they're feeling overwhelmed. Maybe they need the comfort and the quiet of, the, of you in the couch right now. But it's going to show up as defiance in kids and as adults. Yeah. So for me, it was, I need you to understand me. I need you to see my point of view. And I need you to agree with my point of view. I need us to be on the same page because otherwise I feel out of control. So when it comes to uh, your sister's highlighting, yes, being responsive versus reactive, the book goddess, which is here, um, Sherry, she says, on target, power, pause, works great. Everyone throughout the planet has a given phrase, a given book, a given aspect that has helped them, which is why this discussion is very important. So whatever we're listening to and hearing from others, whether it be in this group chat or you go to a different show or something you're sitting reading with your coffee in the morning, it can be beneficial to other people. Uh, Brahm says the diaphragm keeps the record. Got to relax the tummy. Um, that's why I eat a lot of chocolate cake. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Ice cream no, too. No, but she, they're, um, they're, they're right. The, relax the tummy. So actually when, when our nervous system is in a good place, it's called rest and digest, right? So mm -hmm. we actually are in this kind of nice wave, this homeostasis. When we have anxiety, one of the first things that happens is, oh my gosh, gut health, mm -hmm. right? Constipation or the other side, right? Yeah, right, I right. Mean, you, you either run in or you're standing still yes, in, with, your, mean, with, your, with, stomach yeah, with your stomach. You. Yeah. It tells you. So that gut health, absolutely. That's one of the first places the anxiety will pop up, right? But we also see high blood pressure, you know, panic attacks. People go to the ER thinking they're having a heart attack. Yeah. It feels that real for them. Chest pains, chest pains, mm -hmm. uh, eye twitches, so many different ways the body's sending its own individual signal to you individually. <laughs> it's, 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 not, it's not the same with everyone to the same intensity or degree or breadth and depth of what's happening to the body, but it's doing the same thing to a lot of people. It's letting you know, okay, you see something's unresolved or you're about to step into something that you're going to wish you never stepped into. You know, you, you, so the, the more we listen to it, we end up finding a nice, smooth, rhythmic pattern of peacefulness, tranquility, Sad. and serenity, and, the, and we feel centeredness. Yeah. We, feel that, we feel that our compass has just been trained how to work because we all have an emotional compass. Sometimes we're mismanaged or not cared for properly by caregivers who themselves have a broken compass. So uh, the book goddess says gut is the second brain. Um, so there are a number of points that can be highlighted in a group chat. Everyone, please make sure you're encouraging each other as well. Make a friend while you're here if you feel emotionally comfortable to do so. Um, Dot John says the thing is anxiety gets gets one no, or in other words, gets us nowhere uh, to a measure to a measure degree. Uh, there is a, a amount of stress as you highlighted it, as a psychotherapist at the beginning that can be beneficial to us, but living on the edge is what you're saying. Not no bueno, right? Well, I mean, they're, they're absolutely right. One of the things that I constantly tell myself is 
there is no preparation in worry. There is no preparation in worry. And I think one of the things we've learned, certainly in the last two years now with the pandemic is we can only make a good decision with the information we have in front of us right now. Yeah. So I can make lots of plans. (laughs) And and a bunch of what ifs. (laughs) Lots of of plans, a bunch of what ifs. Tomorrow they're all going to get thrown to heck. Yep, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. So one of the things that I'm starting to learn more about now is the right and left brain battle, the strengths and weaknesses of your right and left brain. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of that is how you can support uh, that balance, right? The right side is emotions and feelings. The left side is practical time and order and sequence. But what I'm realizing with my anxiety is I need the right and left brain to work as a more even team. Yes, And absolutely. that's some yeah. of the mindfulness too. Yeah. What we do is we isolate, right? We don't reach out and ask for support. As soon as we reach out and ask for support, our anxiety lowers. Yeah. We are meant to be seen and supported by other like-minded individuals, right? Mm-hmm. So when I sit and try to redo my calendar for an hour to make my week work, that's anxious energy. And it's all gonna change tomorrow anyway, right? Mm-hmm. When I reach out to another mommy and say, hey, can you do pickup on Friday? And, and then you tell me the next day that you need help. Mm-hmm. Oh, immediately, my body relaxes. I feel seen, I feel supported, and I get to give back. When we're of service, it completely takes us out of our self and our rumination and our worry. Yeah. So being supported and then being able to be of service and give it back keeps us from isolating and it lowers our anxiety. They prove to be, they prove to be bookends for us when we support someone else and we, when we are self-sacrificing or people of service. Uh, they, they keep us centered and from uh, keeping our, it keeps our car on the highway. You know, it, it keeps us from derailing and falling off into a ditch uh, because we know, okay, I'm feeling this way. Who can I go support so I can get my equilibrium back, my, my emotional equilibrium back? Uh, who do I need to give a little service to? My next door neighbor, uh, well, he hates me anyhow. But if I do a little bit, you know, we'll chip he away at you. We'll even chip more a- the reason to go to yeah, the let, trash chip, out, let's right? see. I, yeah, now <laughs> I don't have to feel, you know, I can make myself feel a little bit better. Let me go take his trash cans out. Let me go pick up his trash cans and take it to, and where do you want me to put those? You know, there are ways in which we can, take anxiety and let it know we're talking about anxiety that's a liability overthinking under preparing procrastination and all these things can come and we can put them where they need to be and procrastination turns into well i'm just patiently waiting and now we're not a procrastinator we're recognizing i'm just patiently waiting for whatever i need to or i'm taking time um i've, I've got to ask you this you have two websites please tell everyone what each one of the websites are yeah so it's an important separation for me the trauma-free tree is my psychotherapy i'm an associate marriage and family therapist and i work specifically with trauma so i am fully trained in emdr which is a great trauma resource mostly individual sessions full psychotherapy Mm -hmm. for clients just in california that's my license And because I wanted to share more of my journey Mm -hmm. with anxiety and um, how it links to depression, and I want to be able to do group workshops, I want to have online Mm -hmm. courses, right? I want to help more people outside of the state of California. I started K&A coaching, which is knowing and adjusting, right? Knowing our body, knowing our thoughts and adjusting, just shifting. So that is the separation between the two. And, and, you know, there's a lot of debate as to whether or not therapists should be life coaches. And I feel very strongly that if you're seeing a life coach, you want to make sure that they do have a really, really good foundation in um, psychotherapy or, or trauma as well. Um, So I'm very specific about the separation, but Mm -hmm. the, the coaching is very close to my heart because I do get to share a little bit of my personal journey of, the anxiety I had um, when I had my son and he's now seven and the shifts that I've been able to make just in the last few years that has changed 
an entire family dynamic, how I communicate mm. with my ex-husband, his dad, yeah. how I get to live my life, how I get to be a mother, how I get to be a partner. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about both. With, with uh, an anxiety management workshop that I see, I'm looking at your website, uh, one of your websites here, uh, anxiety management workshop. Let's just do this. Name, if you could please, two to three things that a person can some tips out of the anxiety management workshop that someone can put into play right now. Yeah. So one of the first things we do is an emotional log, right? They have to keep an emotional log journal mm -hmm. and it's simple, but hard, right? That's, that's what I usually say about this whole process. It's simple, but hard. So the log is what am I feeling? Where did it show up in my body? Mm -hmm. And how did I react? Okay, I'm going to hold on there for a second. The first one was what again? Everybody, please feel free to write these down. If you have, maybe you're not struggling and you don't need this information per se, but maybe you do if you want to give service or support to someone else. So please repeat them again. Everybody feel free to, in your own, the privacy of your own home or wherever you may be, write them down or make note of them. Of course, you can watch this back later. What were the three again, please? Yes. So what am I feeling? How mm -hmm. is it showing up in my body? And you know, you talk, you, you know, I'm a guy, you know, I'm a guy, right? We, we're not, okay. I'm a little slow. Even more Guys, important. Okay. So can you re repeat that? Repeat that. Well, repeat that again, please. Yep. Uh, I'm a little what slower. I, Go ahead. What am I feeling? Mm -hmm. How's it showing up in my body? Okay. And then how did I react? Got it. And so what we look for is negative patterns. So is there something that's occurring that you're reacting every time that's closing up communication, um, causing you to isolate, causing you to have, um, you know, broken relationships? We want to look at those negative patterns and then we create the pause. We create the pause somewhere before the reaction. What am I feeling? What am I thinking? Where is it showing up in my body? Pause wait until that agitation and that feeling calms down and then you respond, then you react then you have your next step. So, and that's where, that's where the mindfulness practice comes in, which that's, that's this guy. He's, he's, he's ready to step in and share a little bit of that. If you are, <laughs> but, but he, he's not the star of the show until he gets on camera. <laughs> No, but, so, but he's, he's, he's he, the stronger uh, mindfulness practice. Is he, he's like, he, he's, he's like, <laughs> He's like, uh, what's that? What's that movie? The King and I. He's like the the movie, The King and I. There, I'm just saying, he, you got to get on camera to be. Hey, I, I thought he was over there doing his hair or something like that. So, it is. <laughs> hey, it is hey, 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 hey. We, we're brothers in arms, man. Right. We're brothers in arms. <laughs> I don't know what arms got to do with the head. I just thought I'd say that. You know, brothers in brains. We got to do this summer that was really nice. As people started to get back out into the world, you, you know, you you know, you can't you can't just start talking about what you did in the summer. You don't even introduce them. You just she just totally kills your introduction. She just she just keeps she talking. Like wait, wait, like you're not, like you're not even there. Like you just, the no, no, no. You can't have no introduction. Let me tell you what happened in summer. And then when I was seven, and then okay, so let's try that again. Let's do, hold on a second. Let's try that again. Here we go. He just arrived. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> hey, yes, he is. Hey, ain't nothing wrong in that. Hey, he that wrong. hey that's that's better than having something thrown at you. <laughs> that's, better. that's better. So, you know, hey, Amy's thinking to herself, wait a minute. I've been on the show twice. He didn't do that for me. <laughs> he is the quiet, the quiet uh, safety post. He's, he's very happy to be in the background. But hey, well, but no, I wanted, see, I wanted him to join today because, you know, his practice. That's not what you told me. Been, that's not what you told right, me. You trying to cover up. You said I don't want my. Make sure we're almost at the end of the show. Where he, he he, come in <laughs> for like a couple of seconds is what you said. Don't even try to look at her turning. She's turning red right now. She knows the truth. Look, got, do we have to go? We got to go. <laughs> we got to go to the park. We got to go to the park. Family time. <laughs> okay. So in actuality, the person that, of course, that is 
least or the last person is usually the person that ends up being first per se because uh, everybody's going where where is he and that's kind of what happened here <laughs> because at the beginning i said special guest and i have a few people i'm looking at something people are writing me going like hey, what special guest you know <laughs> so here it is Extreme. this is our special <laughs> guest our special guest so she's gonna go like he's still taking the trash out i don't care he's special to everybody else but he's still taking the trash out for me exactly. killing killing spiders taking the trash out <laughs> But let's let's just do this real quick. I know you wanted to talk about what you're going to say a, a few moments ago, Amy, but I, I'm, I'm going to do this and then we're going to get to something uh, that I have planned that neither one of you know I'm going to do this to you. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> so taking the trash out, killing spiders. Can you name one more thing that a man does often, many times, even though these are things my daughters do for themselves because they're single, but Taking the trash out, killing spiders, name one more thing a man is often labeled or stereotyped as doing in the house that he needs to take care of. Is that a question for me or for him? And now you're a couple, so you, it's okay. <laughs> you, you, both of okay. you. I'll, I'll give you one. They are expected to just handle things and not express their needs or their overwhelm. Ooh, you're going to start trouble now, man. We're going to. I make sure make sure my my discussion over here doesn't blow up on me. That's a good one. That's a good that one. What what were a role what were you going to say that we tend to fall into? There you um, go. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Very easily, and we're kind of conditioned to fall into is that I need to not. I don't have room to express what I need or my feelings or how I'm experiencing something. I just need yeah. to handle Dude. my business and take yeah. care. Everybody. Yeah, just now, be strong for the family I, and not express their own needs, right? I, I do want to say, I don't know how you did it, but are there cameras here in my studio that you know exactly where I was going to go <laughs> with this discussion? No, literally, I am not. I am not kidding. It's it's on the paper here. It's it's right here. I was going to go down that that actual discussion. Let's hold it just for a moment. The lead in to that discussion was that question I proposed to both of you, uh, which was killing spiders and per se taking the trash out. Uh, one other thing that men do, I actually don't have a third one. I'm just throwing it out to you. This is just an open discussion. There is no secret answer that I'm trying to get you to move toward. There isn't. Um, oh, wait a minute. Somebody's, nope. I told you you're going to blow up the chat. I told you it's happening right here. So I'm scrolling and it, um, uh, CCS mantra says protecting the home from invaders. Okay, that's it. We'll go with that one. Okay. Yeah, okay, so. Nothing greater than spiders. <laughs> Right. Exactly. Maybe, maybe a raccoon, you know, but when you start talking bears and, and, you know, guys with guns, then that's a, that's a problem. All right. So we're, we're talking, uh, the trash, just, just bear with me. Is, I'm doing something to you that uh, I've been planning to do to somebody. Unfortunately, you said yes. Enjoy the show. Uh, trash spiders. And she says invaders. Okay. Now this is just an impromptu conversation about men's mental health, anxiety. That's now the show is just taking that, that, uh, that turn, not a veer. We literally have a controlled turn. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we have trash spiders and from the group chat over here, uh, we're going to take, uh, CC mantra mantras invaders. Uh, your sister says you have to be strong for her instead of you should be there for her. Uh, that's an excellent one. You know what? Uh, we might have to have an all men show and kick Amy to the curb because I see my buddy Matt, who was here last night on our group chat, is here. We we may have to I may have to talk to you to you uh, uh, privately, and we we set up another show uh, to have a discussion about this. We're going to touch on this. We started off the conversation, and the focus of this show was about anxiety. Anxiety can truly prove to be something that is overwhelming for people. Period, but even more so during the critical times we live in, with people dealing with well. The pandemic, realistically. Yeah. Um, I can't turn a corner and people talk about it. Your thoughts. You were going to say something. Oh, introduce yourself officially. I just oh, noticed I'm that. Nick, I, I, Nick <laughs> right? I, I call him the beard. Yeah, Not that he appreciates that. I but I just think, I seriously think we need a silhouette, a shirt that's a silhouette. <laughs> and it says the beard. And then you have the website. You have your website right near it I to take work. him back. Yeah. Uh, I'm, just a marketing idea. Go ahead. You were going to say something, Nick. 
Uh, was I? Ca caught him. I got him. I got him. Caught him off guard. The reason I wanted him to spend some time with us is because, number one, he's taught me a lot about mindfulness. His Buddhist practice and, and the history that he's been through to find his calm center and what that means for us in our home. We, we took a lot of time before we decided to join families and live together with my son, who's seven. And what he's shown me a partnership is with kind, calm words, even when you're feeling lots of feelings, I think is the best gift I'm giving my son. And also how to support a partner that has anxiety. He does have his own needs. He does have his own strengths and weaknesses, but the way that he is able to support me with me managing my anxiety every day, not everybody can do it. It takes big shoulders. Luckily he's got them, but it's because his self-care is really strong and in place. And so I think that's really important for people to, to look at is how can you support this person who's on their own journey of healing? That was, that was absolutely um, beautiful. You do know you're already, you guys are already married, right? You guys, you guys are not yet. Not. <laughs> okay. So you guys, uh, no, I'm just going to, let me rephrase that. You do know he's already with you. You you don't have to sell him anymore. You have to, you know, <laughs> you know. Hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. No, that was the first part of what I was going to say. Now here comes the second part, but go ahead and keep doing it. Cause us men need that every night. <laughs> just, just, just keep, just keep going there. It, it helps us out a little bit because the reality of it is there are vulnerable pressure points emotionally that we all have, but men, a lot of you have already heard this before. If you watch this, uh, platform narc abuse tv network uh, ours can run quite deep um it absolutely does and i think yeah i'm i don't want to turn it into a man discussion right now but he's nick's about to go there but i just want to say that ladies don't start thinking that we're going to take over and push amy out I, i'm because somebody just wrote here i'm hold your thought there nick uh cc mantra says i'm having anxiety waiting laugh out loud let's discuss it so we are going to but go ahead nick you're going to say something well, I think that we're very much, uh, as as men, we're conditioned to not um, look for ways to express that and allow yep. our partner yep. into our lives. Absolutely. So it's not only for our own well-being, which is, of, of course, important, but when we're not, and I think something that Amy has, has pointed out to me before, even if whatever work I've happened to do yep. in my life to kind of <clears throat> work myself through uh, some of my history and getting to a more... <clears throat> a uh, well placed mm -hmm. in my life there's still that conditioning of yes 40 years of existence and sometimes amy yeah. has to remind me <clears throat> excuse me that mm -hmm. it actually helps mm -hmm. her feel close to me um and yes. feel like our relationship is a solid well connected one if i'm able to express her right absolutely you know, i have this i have this going on right now and this is how i'm feeling about something i have this yeah. particular anxiety right now i'm feeling a little scared yeah. about something yeah um, and not, she's not looking for a strong uh, hero to come with, in and with a solution. Superman all the time. She's looking for yeah. something that she yeah. can feel connected with. And yeah. then it, the other benefit of that is that I feel this thing I didn't know I needed, which was Bingo. Um, a strong connection with a partner that makes me feel supported and hears me and acknowledges even the the, the weak parts. And it's hard to. Uh, avail yourself and understand that yes. oh someone can love me even for the little weaknesses that i have and the little scary spots someone yep. can love me and hold even that and, and, and in actuality what you just said everyone please make sure tell a friend i'm telling you right now tell a friend to watch this back because more and more women, I, I highlighted this uh, to, to my daughters many times. Uh, fortunately, uh, they've been kind enough to, to get what I'm mentioning, Tim. Um, I'm going to turn it into a guy show. Um, it's a point that my father made uh, to his sons, us. He said, when you show your feelings, you're not sh being weak. Mm -hmm you actually are being an ACDC plug. You're plugging into whoever you're showing them to. If they are not ready to give you a charge of empathy back, they're not for you. You, you can't plug into that woman that you say you want to be with and, and nurture and take care of. And she do the same to you when you can't plug in or in other words, be vulnerable. 
-hmm. So that's why what you said has weight to it, my friend, because you're saying to men, this is normal what, when we do this. That is plugging in because what you're feeling is normal. The plugging part, maybe no one's ever taught you, oh, I'm feeling this. I need to go outside of myself and talk with someone is a trusted friend. It, it could be a trusted friend. I mean, we know that as guys, we can have trusted friends. Those conversations are really short. We, you know, we may, we may, may let out a little tear and then we're going like, okay, what's the, what game is on? You know, we kind of do, you know, okay, give me another beer. You know, just, we went, yeah. but when it's a woman in our life, mom, sister, cousin, whatever it may be, a female, we go even further. Mm -hmm. And not just out from ourselves, we go deeper. Yes. And for someone with anxiety. And, and I just want to say this before you say that. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, Amy. Because when men start to talk about their emotions, ladies, please watch this back. There are certain cues that we will do to let you know we're about to let it out. And one of the main ones, you take this for, with a grain of salt, if you wish. Nick did it, and I did it. And we, it, a lot of times it's like when people yawn, you, it, you know, and Nick's going to go like, what is he talking about? We all do it. I'm just saying this because I've done this with some other psychologists that are men, and they told me, and they said, just watch it. It happens every time. When men go to express themselves and they're being real, they will usually clear their, clear their throat. <laughs> they will always do it yeah. because they're being very real with you, and it's, it, it, at times, it can be extremely scary, but if you do it enough, uh, it can happen. Uh, one of the biggest things that happens when a man starts to share, go to plug into you and let you know what he's scared about, he's not scared because he can't come up with a solution. He's scared that he will not measure up to the way you see him, to the way he sees himself. But what's interesting about what you said, Nick, is you just opened the door for other people. <laughs> As I say that, Matt chimes in. I'm looking at the big monitor over here. Vulnerabilities are superpowers. He is absolutely yes, correct. Yes, we are. And now if a guy is watching this, please, Amy, I'm not trying to disregard that you're not in the room, but I'm telling you guys, if you watch this back, Amy just introduced to you the man that means something to her. But what he said means everything to everyone else that's listening. If you have no idea of what it's like to be raised with a balanced male in your life, he just told you how to get one and keep one. As my mother would say, a lot of men or women can get a man or get a woman, but they don't know how to keep one. Unless it's a crazy one. If they're crazy, you got to let them go. They want to go to, you know, I'm just, <laughs> Nick, you know what I'm talking about. They create, and that's one thing if somebody's dealing with something and they want to work with you. Because once a man recognizes that he has a secure place to let his, as it were, hair down, oh my goodness, you're going to hear some stuff, right, Amy? You're going you're gonna to see, quote unquote, weakness, vulnerability, whichever way you want to describe it, but he's trying to plug in. You know how you try to plug something in and it just, man, it's not, and then you have to turn it around because you got the plugs wrong, yep. you know? That's what a man is doing. He, he tries a few times and goes, oh, that's not right. He, a man always wants to plug into something. But what it also is saying, what I'm saying to Amy, if I tell her, hey, baby, you know, I'm, I have this going on right now and I'm feeling a little anxious. I'm feeling a little nervous about uh, an outcome of something or what my next step is going to be. What I'm actually telling her is I trust you enough to be there for me. I Hold it. Wait, time out. Dude, you need your own show, bro. This is like I, I need you to hang out with me and give me sound bites. Dude, sound bites. I should just walk behind you whenever you say something and just Please. press a button and, and you know. <laughs> Welcome to the Nick Says Show. Nick says this. <laughs> just kind of like. <laughs> Welcome to Nick. Go but ahead, I mean, Nick. For, for Go ahead, Amy. I'm sorry. You know, for someone that walks around feeling anxious all day long, if he pulls in and doesn't let me know what's going on with him, yes. I immediately think it's my fault. Yes. I immediately yes. think he's Absolutely. leaving. So Absolutely. To have that security, that, that consistent check-in, babe, this is what's going on with me. Has nothing to yes. do with you. 
a check-in. I can see what he's working through. I'm going to trust that he's going to find his way on his own. I don't need to tell him how to do it or my opinion on what he needs to do next. I trust him in his path. But yeah. I know that it's not directly something that I have failed at because he's letting yeah. me in. And he's showing me, I believe in you and I believe in our partnership and that you're strong enough to handle this information and to yep. treat it with care, not use it against me two weeks later in an argument. Yep. Yep. You know, not, Absolutely. not freak out about it. Yep. But to just yep. support it and let me find my way. Yeah. Don't sit there and, and, and then turn around and use it to bash each other or you know, it's gonna be like, Well, you know, the reason you reacted that way is because your dad is this way. Okay, that could be totally correct, but that has nothing to do about right now. <laughs> it's yeah. like so right Jill, now. Jillian just wrote, Are you mad at <laughs> yeah. me? Why yes. Are you mad at me? Wait, why are you no, better? You're mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, seriously, she needs to have. She needs to write an ebook about 125 pages in, in a chapter, is. just three chapters. <laughs> one is, are you mad at me? Next one, why are you mad at me? Exactly. I know you're mad at me. Yeah. But so it's it's a beautiful thing to give a partner with anxiety to have that check in, and to trust that they're that they're gonna support you. So let's look at uh, Sabine, Wonder Woman, who's going to be on the show, I believe, next week or in a couple of weeks. Sabine is agreeing with you, Nick, and uh, everyone else is appreciating what you just mentioned, Amy. Uh, i got to give you guys uh, this information. Uh, Miss Jamaican Doll says, hi from Jamaica. So you guys got some love from Jamaica for <laughs> both of you. Uh, and, of course, Sabine says, I trust you enough to be there for me. That's essentially what you were just saying, Nick. Uh, others are, are picking up on that. A lot of times a woman doesn't uh, have this information. She doesn't know because she herself has never been exposed to a balanced, emotional, a mature woman uh, who is not taking it personal. And uh, maybe she's been exposed to a man who is overly critical, very judgmental, pushy, uh, controlling when it or putting emotions in a lockdown, in a no cry zone, a no cry zone, a number of things that can come into play. But when a man is looking at you and he's he can't get it out to say what Sabine and Nick just said, I trust you enough to be there for me. And when you're there for me, I'm going to let you know some things that are inside of me. You have no idea that runs pretty deep. I just mask it by not crying or taking care of the next task or not even masking it. I just got to I got to do this because if I don't get up and go to work and go do this, we got bigger problems. And all of a sudden, those emotions are suppressed as a pattern or a lifestyle. But if he can, a man feels comfortable enough, secure enough to have a lifestyle of being open and transparent. I'm telling you, women, you have no idea what will start coming out of us. You'll be hearing some stuff and going like, who are you? <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, why are you crying at that movie? I tried to tell you, I got some stuff inside of me. The way I look at the world and men will go around, Nick. You could disagree or agree. Feel free to chime in. Um, men will go around and you will. Have, there will be stuff we'll be thinking and you will, you know, a woman asks, so what are you thinking? And it's almost like you really don't want to ask that question. <laughs> you really, you ask your girlfriend that and she'll tell you and that'll be the end of the conversation. You ask me, we'll have a nine hour discussion of what I'm really thinking about something. If you're going to listen to me and not take it personal. But uh, Nick, Matthew says, invest into what you find of value with time, empathy, and compassion. But Nick, here we go. I don't know how you guys endured me on the soapbox thing, but I was planning to do something with both of you, and I hope you're ready. I'm not ignoring everybody else that's here, and, uh, uh, but uh, Kaylee, Kylie says, hi, hi Amy. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, I wanted to tell you that uh, Amber says creating safe spaces for people means sometimes we have to be stronger than we were prepared to be. Now I'm going to turn it into the Nick and Amy show. They didn't know this was coming, but I sat up last night and did not go to bed until I said, I'm not going to bed until I come up with this little thing I'm going to do after I kicked a bunch of stuff around, hoping that he would show up. Now, Nick is here. The beard is here. Amy is here. The, I was going to say anxious Amy, but I can't even call you that anymore. Uh, the, the amicable Amy is here. And, and the nimble Nick is here. The beard is in the house. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Are you ready? Here we go. 
<laughs> we have gone 58 minutes. We've um, we've been together here, all three of us now, for a few minutes. And I want people to understand you can go like, comment, share, follow uh, these beautiful people at their websites and a whole lot more. <laughs> I'm sorry. A lot of times I, I try to pay attention to my guests, but people put stuff up and I can't help but laugh. That's my, that's my mother, by the way. Oh, my God. Okay. On me. All right. <laughs> Nick is a rare breed and has a nice beard. I almost, I almost got creeped out for a moment, but now you told me it was your mom. Now I'm really creeped. Okay. So anyway, what I was going to say. All right. I'm, messing, feisty one. I'm just, no, I, no, I couldn't tell by you at all. Anyhow, so Nick, I pray for you, man. So I was, I was gonna say, <laughs> there are ways in which Nick, you have found to center yourself in a lifestyle that helps you be a solid pillar and support for Amy and your family. Amy, you have found yourself in a situation in which you have a man that has endured your moments in which you wanted to throw something to the moments in which you wanted a hug. Most women find themselves, not just you, but other women can also be in, also be in the same place. We know because men talk. <laughs> we, are, we are the best gossipers on the planet. So we talk. So what are you going through? My mind did that too. Oh, my goodness. And so. How do you do that? Well, I pack my stuff and I leave. Oh, no, I go drinking. I stay in the garage. You know, people, you know, Nick is smiling. He's trying to stay out of trouble. I'll just say it, Nick, because I get you in trouble. I get to hang up when I'm done here. <laughs> but what I was going to say is um, there are different things that men are exposed to because they love that woman. They want that woman. Just as if they were going down the street, passing a car, a car lot, and they have always loved their truck, but they see a new one. A lot of men don't have that problem. They like their truck. They're keeping their truck. It's been dependable and reliable. And yes, they're the only ones that can call it an old truck. Somebody else called it an old truck. You got that right. You can take that. Hey, I told you don't take it personal. You can take that any way you want to. But we have a men discussion all of a sudden. So, so, so anybody can say whatever. They just call it a truck. But don't call my truck an old truck. I can call it an old truck. You can't call it an old truck. Nick, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's because it's yours. If you had to describe Nick, it comes a setup question. If you had to describe Amy and what it's been like being with her during the time you first got the keys to now you've been sitting and driving and moving throughout the planet with her, what has this ride with this great model of a vehicle in life. What has it been like? It's been beautiful, to be honest. I mean, there's a lot of, we're a couple. We're, we moved in together the day we moved in. California got shut down, and we lived in a house for the first time, but that time with a six-year-old, mm -hmm. six-year-old boy. Uh, moved in together and California lockdown, we were stuck in the house together. And what it's honestly been is um, learning what, learning how to love and be loved and what that actually looks like. So you use the word uh, endure and I'm, I've heard Amy say words like put up with and, and yeah, kind right, of yeah. but that's not really what it feels like. It feels like if I love somebody, how I love somebody is loving all of them, even the parts that are um, unpredictable, even the parts that are a little bit um, emotional, whatever the case may be, whatever word you want to attach to that. Mm -hmm. Love is for me and what she's teaching me and loving me in return is when you love a human being, you love the human being, right? And the human being is a sum of experiences mm. it's a multitude of um, these are my bright spots these are my not so bright spots these are some of the things that uh, for me are scary to let people see but I'm going to be that vulnerable human being and trust you to set this out on the table mm. and if I'm being vulnerable enough to set this out on the table and show you that I don't have 
everything figured out and sometimes I'm scared and unsure, I'm trusting that you're not going to get up and run away from the table. And her loving me enough to allow me to do the same has made that such an easy process of, okay, you, you have a personality. You have a whole personality. You have light spots, dark spots, scary spots. You have things that you're so secure and sure of. And you also have things that you're not so secure mm-hmm. and not so sure of. Mm-hmm. I can hold all of those things. You know what I mean? Because I love you, I can hold all of those things. And because she loves me, um, slowly I've learned to allow her that same ability, you know, to give her that same respect. But I, but I do want to say that doesn't mean that we just allow any kind of behavior or dialogue, right? Like we've set a really high standard and he took the lead on that that there won't be unkind words in this house. There won't be yelling. He will say things like, I love you and I'm not leaving this relationship, but I'm leaving this conversation right now. Mm -hmm. If he sees me spike and I haven't learned full emotional Mm -hmm. regulation yet, because my Mm -hmm. anxiety is telling me, no, you have to hear what I have to say right now in this loud voice. He will show me that he is not leaving this relationship but I'm leaving this conversation Absolutely. until we can mm-hmm. come back in a calm, mm-hmm. centered place because that's not what we're doing here. That's not the kind of relationship I want. And that's not what we're modeling for my son. So again, that's been huge is I love you and I love all of you, but that doesn't mm-hmm. mean we just accept any kind of behavior in this relationship. That, I think that's a big separation for people to understand and a big lesson what? for me that I've had to learn. And that's another, it's another aspect of love is modeling this is – this is how I experience love. And this is what I expect from being loved. And she has the same exact thing for me. If there's an unkind word ever spoken, there will be an immediate acknowledgement of this is not how people who love each other speak to each other. Yeah. And full repair and full, full repair. repair so that there's, there's, tr- there's a little bit of trust that it might not happen again, right? Mm-hmm. You don't just say, I'm sorry. What are you doing to repair it to try to make sure that that behavior doesn't yeah. happen again? Yeah. When, when, when you're, when we're living life and, and we are acknowledging each other, as you both are talking that you're doing and working with each other for the purpose of building, uh, not tearing down. Um, this is the kind of conversations, uh, conversational uh, guidelines and principles and standards that you set up between two people. It happens in a corporate world. It happens, uh, it happens on a playing field. <laughs> it's like, Okay, you can't run that route. I, don't, I, don't, I get what you're doing, but yeah, you can't talk to me that way. And, it, and then it's very important to do what you just said, Amy. You, you resolve the matter yeah. and solidify the connectivity instead of letting things fester or waking up the next day or going to bed angry. Uh, and that, it, it, that builds it, the trust, right? That yeah. builds the trust in the emotional intimacy in the relationship. And, yeah. and to know that I feel like every difficult moment we've had or any argument we've had, we've actually become closer after. It didn't build resentments. It brought us more emotionally intimate and connected to one another. So be, that's because, what we're having be, full repair. Because you put yourself in a position in which you're tackling the situation or the problem or the challenge and not each other. Um, we have literally gone an hour and seven minutes uh, talking with one another, uh, but uh, I'm not done torturing you. So let's yeah. just do this so that uh, you, you both can have a life. Baby voice you, soon, yeah, so. you, you, you both have to have a life. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so here we go. Here we go. Um, okay, you got to be there, right, in a little bit? You got three minutes? Nick has to leave to go pick up baby boy. Okay, here we go. Nick, this is what I want you to do. I want you to tell me what you would like to do for Amy that will make Amy smile today. Name uh, one thing. I, it might not name, be appropriate for. Ma- don't even go there. <laughs> what is wrong with you people? What is is okay? Let's just keep it. Your mom's here. Come on now. What name? Name one thing that you would. My God. Okay, I go pick up the kid. Don't even ask. This is, you we'll people, I that. that was a simple. What I'll name one thing? The name one thing that you would like to do for her to make her smile before you leave. Name one thing you would like to do for her. 
I'm not, if I, first, I'll give her a kiss before I leave, and I'll check in with her throughout the day, because uh, that's what one thing that we have an agreement on, that I have a very busy job, and it's very difficult for me to get to my phone, but taking a moment to check in and say, hi, baby, how are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, okay, I, I'm sorry, man. You can't see the chat, but people are being so silly. I'm trying to be <laughs> serious as you're saying that. But if you can read what I'm seeing on the screen, something wrong with you people, and both of you started it. I am glad nobody else will be able to see what's written on the screen here. But go ahead. I'm respecting you, my man. You better go. Okay, a kiss. Go ahead. You want to get your kiss on, man? Go ahead, man. Go get your kiss. Okay? All right. Never, yeah, you never had one of those in the background when you did that. That's the first time. All right. I just gave All right. her some news at 10 o'clock this morning. So, and uh, oh. I'll be checking in with her throughout the day to let her yes. make sure that her anxiety is. Okay. All right. Hey, listen, and I'm going to do my best to make sure she's not hyped up on anxiety by the time we get done because I got a couple okay. more questions and then we got to be done. But uh, thank I'm you, my I'm friend I'm Nick. I'm about to pick up the boys. Nice to see you. Thank All you. All right. Take me. care. Do, you, do your thing, man. Good yes, example. Sir. Thank you for being exemplary in, in uh, expressing yourself. Have a good one. Thank you. You too. Okay. Uh, across the screen here, your friends and family and others who don't know you have lost their mind. So I'm not <laughs> gonna, I am not going to read what's on the screen. It's funny, though. It's funny, though. Uh, it's, not, it's not bad, everybody. So if you don't get to see it, it's, it's not horrible. But thank you, Matt, for that. Uh, yeah, uh, your sister says, Jillian says, she's the most inappropriate of all of us, please. She is, so, all right. You know what? She must be the younger sister then. Or, are you... I, I, I think Are you the youngest? Mom, but <laughs> I don't, man. This is you guys are funny. I'm not gonna. Uh, he kept his composure well and said uh, for that question. Uh, I okay. thought that was a great question, but then once he said something, we're like, yeah, man, that was a bad question because that could lead anywhere, couldn't it? All right, I have to have one of those every every now and then. Uh, when it comes to you, I did have a question for you. And uh, I actually have three of them. I'm going to pick this particular one now that Nick is gone. This is the one I'm going to pick for you. When it comes to anxiety, when it comes to anxiety, overwhelming anxiety, panic attacks, panic attacks, overwhelming anxiety, and a number of crucial moments that we can have in our life, what are the, for you, top two or three things that you try to keep in mind or do when you're confronted with overwhelming anxiety? Yeah, so I'm glad we got back to that because there's an exercise that I'll give you guys a little walkthrough right here, but it's also on my YouTube page. And it is really, really beneficial for those high moments. Bye, right? Nick. When, when, uh, when that anxiety leads to maybe a panic attack, maybe to a, a freeze response where you literally can't, can't move or take the next step. So it's called TIPP, T-I-P-P. -P, and it stands for temperature change, intense movement, progressive muscle relaxation, and paced breathing, T-I-P-P. -P. So I know that sounds like a lot, but again, very simple a great quick fix for when that anxiety is almost getting you to a panic attack. So when we talk about temperature change, grab an ice tray, crack it in a bowl, and you're gonna dig your hands in that bowl of ice. Temperature change. We wanna drop the temperature. Go ahead and take a, a water bottle and put it on the back of your neck. We wanna drop the temperature. Then eyes, intense movement. Go ahead and do 25 jumping jacks real quick. P, progressive muscle relaxation. We're actually gonna squeeze and tighten our body when we inhale, and then we're gonna shake it all out when we exhale. And then the Pro second P Progressive, is, progressive uh, what again? Was progressive a muscle relaxation, PMR. Okay. And then the second P, is paced breathing. That's when you can get to your, I'm gonna count, inhale for four, through the nose, exhale for five, out the mouth. The problem is we tell anxious people, just breathe. We can't do that sometimes. We can't tell a person whose nervous system is on fire to just concentrate on their breathing. So we do this order first, T-I-P-P. -P. 
you're, you're getting the blood flow go going, you're increasing circulation, you're feeling the body where it is uh, being activated, then you can get to your relaxed breathing. So you can look that, you can Google that, T-I-P-P, and it's also on my YouTube page. I walk you guys through it. But that is a beautiful way to kind of halt that high, intense, anxious moment. When it comes to the tips, the tips that you just gave us, and the tip, T-I-P-P, -P, that you just broke down, this is something that we make a part of our lifestyle is essentially what you're telling us. This is not, well, what if I'm over here or what if the, we don't leave ourselves vulnerable? Just as well as we would plan, well, we're in California, or whether you may be in Texas and other parts of the world, you may have to plan for a well-known disaster that happens in that area. You're essentially telling us to make sure that we are prepared to tackle, maneuver, navigate when anxiety raises overwhelming yes. anxiety, inappropriate, as it were, anxiety, because it came out of the blue, maybe a car accident, whatever. We may need to step into what you just highlighted or something else because we are now prepared for anxiety. So we don't just live our life in la-la land. We literally are prepared for anxiety so that we know we have a measure of control to stay as stable as we possibly can. Yeah, that's, that's the tool belt, right? So I always tell my clients, like, we're, you're, you're putting your tools in your tool belt, but it's clipped to you. Mm -hmm. And at any given time, you're going to pull out something that you can use. Now, you want to practice these things when you're not having a panic attack so that your body will remember it in the moment when it is at such a high level of stress. Training the brain, it. training the brain then is what you're saying. Yeah, make them a part of your daily routine so that when you do need it, when things spike real high, your body will remember that tool. If we don't do that, then we're leaving ourselves open uh, to whatever may happen. Any unforeseen occurrence and circumstance it will now catch us per se off guard and we'll be living on the edge. And then you said something at the beginning, then it's like a ripple effect to others around us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I really think that if you leave your front door mm -hmm. with anger and aggression, right? Yeah. You cut someone off before you turn out of your street that person has that energy, they bring that to their next interaction, right? And all day long, it's just this ripple effect of this energy. If you can shift that for yourself, and you start interacting with people in a reset, you're going to see a different outcome for the day. You know, my, my clients, the most beautiful thing they tell me is, I don't have bad days anymore. I have tough moments, I have bad moments. But yes. I can pause and reset 20 times a day if I need to. There you go. There you go. And, yeah. and that will give you a, a different perspective on the world. I don't see the world as a scary, overwhelming right. place. Most right, of right, right, right. You know, many people wake up each day that way. Throughout the day, they can't even have lunch because they feel that way. And many people can't go to bed at night because their lives are governed and feel that way. You're saying that, that they're, is the beauty in life that can be seen when we are prepared with our, and I'm going to take uh, your teaching tool, of having a tool belt. Yeah. A tool belt with the proper tools to deal with anxiety when those well, anxious moments and circumstances come up. But if we go out unprepared, old rusty tools or broken tools, inappropriate tools or no tools, then we are vulnerable to whatever comes our way, and before we know it, we're having one panic attack after another. This information can be beneficial for those of you that can find it that way. For others that may need more, well, if you feel that it is more intense and you need specialty work, uh, there are coaches you can deal with, other individuals, and of course, a, a, a doctor that is specializes in a professional in those given areas. Whatever you need to do, do what you need to do to hold on to your emotional stability. Don't feel stigmatized or shamed into doing nothing. You may need to reach out to this wonderful person I have here in front of me, uh, Amy. And uh, if, you're, if, you, if you play your cards right, you might be able to get the beard as well. 
but um <laughs> or you may be able to get her mom uh or her sister Jillian you may get you may get the whole family you may get the whole family helping you out but uh, uh Amy this has been amazing we have gone 1 hour and 18 minutes um thank you so much for allowing Nick uh to uh to be a part of the show um i i uh i have to tell you this you have two websites which i'm going to tell you stuff you already know two websites you have two youtube channels you have I'm not gonna pull it up. You have you have so much going on. What is it? What is your routine when it's time to go to bed? Yeah, that's when my anxiety goes through the roof. When I'm busy throughout my day, right? The intrusive thoughts aren't so big. And then as soon as I start to calm down, my brain goes, "Oh, good. Now it's our time to shine. Let's do the to-do list for tomorrow and the next <laughs> ten years." Right. <laughs> Wait, tomorrow and the next 10 years. I like that oh, statement. Sure. That's pretty yes, good. Yeah. Yes. Instead yes. of going to bed, you're like, your brain is still oh, like yes. reactivated. My brain, me, my brain will tell me, don't forget to worry about more things tomorrow. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But don't go to sleep. It's, let's stay up and worry about tomorrow uh, until 12.01 and then try to go to sleep. Yeah. So two When you got to be up at six. Things. Okay, go ahead that I do before bed. Number one is I will write out my to-do list, right, okay. for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I will set it down and say, it is there, it is written down, that's okay. enough for today. I don't have to think about it till tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I've done the best that I can today, but I do write it out because I, I don't want to forget, right? right? But it's there. It's sitting waiting for me in the morning. Done, right? Next thing I will do is put the phone away. And it's so hard. I'm a scroller. So an hour before bed, I desperately try to put the phone away. I don't want to compare myself to what other people are doing. I'm missing out on this vacation. Oh, someone is texting me another workshop I should start. I remember when I was that size. I remember when my hair was that long. The comparisons, right? right. right? And then I will do a, a, a hold. I'll physically hold myself. When we can feel our body, mm -hmm and contain our, our body, we can sometimes contain our emotions too. So literally laying in bed and just kind of holding myself and saying, oh, this is what I'm grateful for. This is what I got through today. Oh, that was an unexpected blessing. Wasn't that nice when that worked out? I remind myself of the support and the blessings mm -hmm. and, and the beautiful day that we just got through. And I physically hold myself while doing it. And then I remind myself, you deserve to rest. You have to refuel so that you can do another day tomorrow. You deserve to rest. And I just will hold, physically hold myself. State the gratitude, feel your body, keep yourself nice and, and tight, wrapped up, right? It's okay. We got through another beautiful day. We will get through tomorrow as well. Now you deserve to rest. I do it. I do it every night. Sometimes it's kind of rocking, like, oh, God, we yeah. got through today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, uh, I didn't think we were going to make it yeah. a minute there. Right? <laughs> but we did. But yeah, we did. Well, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the crowd. So many people actually go, go through that. Uh, I, I've had some amazing show preps with people and uh, best-selling authors and a number of things since we've been doing this for a little over a year now. And some of the things they tell me in a show prep, I go like, I would have never guessed that about you. <laughs> and they're like, but everyone's dealing with that wow. feeling. Everyone is dealing with that feeling of they need to either do more. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't feel I'm enough. It can be overwhelming, but that's why we want to make sure we have shows just like this uh, that uh, can be very informative. You, you've been for us today and also the first show that we did. This is show number two. We're going to do another one, a third one. Um, and you have been uh, very positive about what you lay out to everyone uh, that they can utilize uh, if it's something for them. So I got to read all these to you and then we're going to call the show quits as we get ready for it within the next 20 minutes. We have another show coming on. Uh, but right now, here, i got to read this stuff to you. By the way, Jillian, your sister, Mama, uh, Mama Sorry, uh, mm -hmm. one, two, three, uh, she had highlighted earlier when Nick was here, she's the most inappropriate of all of us. 
uh, I just wanted to clarify that. Yes, she was not talking about you. She's already cleared that up. She was talking about your mom. Yeah, so yeah. anyhow, so I, I think I think that's funny. <laughs> I really think that's funny, but I, I don't have enough time to go into it. But um, uh, breath work, uh, mindfulness is very good. That's what Anne uh, highlights and encourages everybody as well. She's agreeing with you. Uh, Ash Guzman, Guzman uh, says, this has saved me so many times when I feel my anxiety getting really bad. Uh, she's agreeing with you, uh, some of the techniques, uh, including the, the breathing. Uh, the pack coach highlights a great tool to have a tool belt. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Shay Shay 3178 is here. Thank you so much, my friend, for being here. Love your page. Uh, the Roots of Empathy. Tim says, I prepared that bug out bag uh, for my brain. Uh, all tools for survival always with me. Okay, you got to tell us real quick. Bug out bag. What is that? Well, I have uh, for my son and myself a uh, quiet corner with a, uh, a, a nurture box, right? Or a okay, soothing or, box. So that okay. can have, you know, a candle in it, Play Doh. Oh, got it. Got um, it. Maybe peppermint gum. Age appropriate, obviously, but do one for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Right, um, right, right, right. These, you know, soothing rocks and crystals yeah. to hold. Mm -hmm. Whatever that kind of soothing, nurturing uh, yeah. box is, just get a shoe box. Decorate it. Yeah. Make it look pretty. No, 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 Even yeah. Things, um, smell is a great one. Lavender, peppermint yeah. is very calming. Mm -hmm. And to touch, that's very soothing. And, and, and don't feel you're being childish by doing this. Trust me. Hey, I've got them. Oh, My daughter's got them. Hey, listen, these things work. Uh, without a doubt, of course, always locking into nature, creation, an aspect, going out, looking at birds, whatever. I don't know, make it a bird hobby. Get hummingbirds. I don't know. Find something that will help you hold on to your emotional stability. Yeah. There's so many ways that may work for you. Uh, may not work for somebody else, but we cannot deny this fact. When yeah. we are locked into creation, we will find out when we go into uh, the forest, when we just go in our backyard, I don't know, whatever, a pet. I, I think you touched on that the first show on trauma. Yeah, I can't remember. But having a pet, pressure. yes, it's I think I think you did mention animal. that. You, you yeah. recommended that. All yeah. of these things can be beneficial uh, to us. Just find the one that works for you so that uh, uh, in these critical times we live in, the anxiety does not overwhelm you. Um, I'm going to try to wrap up the show here so you can get to your life. But I got to read to you what people are saying. Uh, uh, Anne says she's going to try what you said about the, the rocking and the holding yourself, yeah. uh, contemplating the positive things that you accomplish before you go to bed. Uh, even though, like you said, you still make your, your notations or your to-do list for the next day, but then you put it down and say, okay, it's there. Don't carry it with you it <laughs> back to bed and go like, Oh, and then you end up, end up keep uh, writing, uh, the to-do list. Um, Amber says, I love this. And she gives you some love and uh, with that self-love uh, is important. Or in other words, uh, as I often say here, there's nothing wrong with the expression self-love. But one thing is definitely important. Um, we need to show the same self-sacrificing spirit that we show to others toward ourselves. Uh, when we do that, we are being more balanced about the way we approach life. I am only I'm only using one arm at present. Oh, an injury, injury, maybe. Yeah, that's okay. You can hold. Now that's yeah, from Anne. That's that's from <laughs> Anne. So Anne, this is what I want you to do, and this is from my professional. Um, and I have no no doctorate or anything. This is my professional ghetto experience. Your ghetto doctor is telling you. You know, you're my friend, uh, and follow the show. If you only have one arm, I want you to put yourself up against the refrigerator or a wall. And I want you to hug yourself the best you can by hugging the refrigerator or the wall. Just reach around and try. That's just, that, that was ghetto. A tree, that was, maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, not everybody has a tree in their house. I just tried it, just in case you can't get outside. Okay, Pat Coach. Uh, and no, no joking. Dan says no joking. Okay, all right. All right. So I hope you feel better. And Amy, you did it again. You survived another show with me. And, uh, oh, wait. We video chatted before we started. Everything was calm. We're all good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm reading their writing. She's she's writing while I'm trying to talk to you serious, and it just made me laugh. She's laughing. She's sending laughing faces. Do you see what she says there? I know. Anne, she Anne's she has one laugh. arm. She has one arm, and the phone is in in the oh, other hand. She's making so, it work. She's here. So, okay, then hug your phone and let your phone hug you back. <laughs> and consider it a hug from all of us today, my friend. We love you very much. All right, Amy. 
next time we get together, we're going to be discussing what? Since Ooh. it's your content, what are we going to talk about? Parenting, I, co-parenting. Okay. I didn't have it in front of me. That's why I got to say yeah. honest answer. Parenting mm -hmm. and co-parenting. Co-parenting co through COVID. That's been interesting. Co-parenting through COVID. Okay. So that's what we're going to be discussing on the 20th. Correct next me if I'm Wednesday. wrong. Yeah, oh, yeah, it is we, next Wednesday. Okay. Same time, so same next week. week. Yeah, we come same today. time, same place. Uh, <laughs> coming to you, coming to you directly from Southern California. Yes. Uh, Amy, the Amy and Paxton uh, hour will be here, and we're going to be talking about co-parenting with COVID and being a mom and a number of other things. Um, we may even touch on trauma and anxiety again. I may need to wrap that up again with you. Okay. Oh, oh, there is some anxiety co-parenting through COVID. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you right now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there may, hey, there may be some trauma there too. So we're gonna trauma, do that yeah. as well. So uh, thank you so much. Two websites, <laughs> two YouTube pages. Do you have you have two Instagrams? Have two I got Instagram. that right? Am yeah. I get it? You're just keep amazing. It, keep it yeah. and separate. But you know yeah. what? It's it it it's my two passions. So I, I'm I'm happy to have. The, the separation and be very, very consistent. I have a full caseload for psychotherapy and my trauma clients, full caseload. Wow. But the life coaching, we're building some group workshops. Maybe you can't afford individual therapy. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. We're going to do really good work in these group Zoom workshops. So, you know, I want things to be affordable to people. I want you to have access. I want you to have the information. This is not for me to hold on to. Um, yeah. in some, you know, VIP status. So yeah. Um, yeah. if you're interested in the group workshops, just send me a direct message, Trauma Free Tree or k &A Coaching. We'll get you a discounted link. We'll find a spot for you to get the support that you need. So technically, any viewer that's watching this show here on Narc Abuse TV could just probably mention that and you will give them a discounted link. Yes. You like yes. the way I just stuck that in there? We didn't Absolutely. discuss that, no, but I just thought stick that I in saw there. saw you on Narc Abuse TV. I'll get you a link with a discounted code. We'll get you in a support group that you can do some really good work. Awesome. And then eventually maybe you get your individual sessions, but at least you've got a really good foundation of care. There's no reason you can't start that now. All right. I need you to do me this favor because I just seen this pop up on the screen. You and I, let's just wave at Anne because she's in Ireland and uh, her and her as a, a one-armed person right now, um, she, we're going to say goodbye to her. She says, take care, both of you, Amy. Thank you. See you later, Paxton. So let's wave at Amy, I mean, at Anne. And goodbye, Anne. Get your rest. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Amy, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, give give a hug to Nick and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. We'll see you next week. Same time, same channel, all that kind of good Bye, stuff. Bye, guys. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye. See you. Bye. Thanks.